Hey, this is Jason Watson with the Dublin Dog Company. You know, today I want to focus a little bit about what it takes to bring a product to market. And specifically, I want to talk about what it took the Dublin Dog Company to bring the Rockster dog toy to the marketplace. So really, think of this video as sort of a how-to for anyone who's had a great idea, but just really didn't know what steps to take next. I would say first and foremost, when you're thinking about bringing a product to market, be passionate about your subject matter. I don't care if the subject matter is stamps, if they're toys, if they're mobile applications, whatever the subject is, be passionate about it. I know for me, back in early 2005, when I just started to think about creating the Dublin Dog Company, I was obsessed with dogs. I had a new German Shepherd puppy at the time. I was constantly going on hikes with the dog. I was always going to the dog park, looking at new toys, collars, leashes, you name it. If you take me to the party, I was going to get you in the corner, talk your ear off about different breeds and where you like to go and how much you like to play, so on and so forth. I was a little crazy. I'm the first to admit it. Now, since launching the Dublin Dog Company back in 2007, I had really directed all that passion towards creating the most utilitarian type dog collar on the marketplace today. For us, that was the original all-style no-stink dog collar. Now that we've continued to kind of prove that product out in the marketplace, I wanted to kind of delve into some other areas. And for me, that wanted to be dog toys. Why? Because it's a great market segment. It's fun. I thought it would you know, really kind of push me creatively to come up with some new and unique ideas. And so that's where I wanted to focus my energy at that point. Step one, focus on the why of your product. Why do you want to bring this product to market in the first place? There usually are two answers to that question. One, no one has ever done this before. So you're coming up with a great idea that has never been introduced to the masses. That is somewhat few and far between, but when they happen, they can be spectacular. Two, and maybe more common, is the fact that the idea that you have and the idea that we had in this case, we thought we could improve on something that was already out there. Now, I know for me, it was a little bit of both. Back in, uh, oh, I guess it was August of 2008, I had what I thought was my aha moment. And when you have these moments, by all means, take notice. Better yet, write them down. I know for me, I sometimes get these aha moments in the most outlandish places. It could be while I'm driving the car in the middle of traffic. A lot of times it happens right when I'm getting ready to fall asleep at night. And so I keep a notebook next to me pretty much at all times so I can jot these ideas down. So the dilemma that I had faced was I love to play fetch with the dogs. And normally I would throw a tennis ball and the dogs would go and retrieve it, bring it back. We've all had that experience. However, have you ever had it when you throw the ball and the dog's not really paying attention and then they have a hard time finding it? Why? Because a tennis ball only sits about two and a half inches off the ground. So it's very easy to get shrouded by grass. Secondly, if I'm not throwing it, the ball's just sitting there. And that, frankly, is boring. Boring for me, boring for the dogs. Sometimes it gets slimy. You know, if I don't have a chuck it, it just kind of sits idle. So I wanted to create something that would kind of, you know, serve both masters in that scenario. One is the fact that it'd be easy to find. So I started to think about the old weeble wobble. Do you remember this? They weeble the wobble, but they don't fall down. You could hit it and it would kind of wobble and pop back up. That's something that I wanted created for a toy. So I could throw this device, it would bounce, 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 and then rise up high. So even a dog at four, full stride would be able to see this toy, grab it, and be able to run with it. Secondly, I wanted it to serve as a brain toy or a brain game. So I put a little treat you know, pouch in it at the top or a treat chamber where I can stuff kibble or some sort of enticement and have the dogs actively participate with this toy whether I was there or not. So that's how I kind of came up with the idea and the mental imagery of a buoy. Think of a buoy that sits in the water. It kind of bounces around, right? But it always sits upright. So that was my focus. That's what I started to run with. Hmm, the idea I have is going to be a buoy ball. Now, step two, you've got to keep an open mind. Now that you think you've got this product in your mind, you've got the perfect idea of how you want it to look and how you want it to behave, be open to other ideas, concepts, models, you name it. You know, for us here at the Dublin Dog Company, this is an inherent part of every one of our processes. I know for me, in the, well, at the time was the buoy ball, I went out to the shoe marketplace. Why? Because the guys that work in the shoe industry were very competitive, they had very aggressive and cool looking designs, and they were very used to working with things like rubber, polymers, and elastomers. So I found what I thought was going to be the perfect designer in that industry. This guy had worked with Nike, he had worked with Teva, he had worked with K-Swiss. So I gave him all the ideas in the grand scheme of what I wanted the buoy ball to be, and I said, run with it. So this is what I got back. And I was like, what the hell is this? It looked like a medieval torture device. 
Yeah, no, that's not it. They missed the mark. But you know what? I gained a lot of experience during that process. So it wasn't so much that I got great results, but the results I did get showed me everything that I didn't necessarily want. So I learned a lot in that process of you know, what to look for, what to be more clear about when communicating my ideas, and it helped me going forward to eliminate a lot of bad designs and a lot of bad communication right out of the gate. So we were able to push that to the side and focus on what we did want and what we didn't know was gonna work. Step three, you've gotta work your idea. And when I say work your idea, I mean you've really gotta physically get in there and work with your idea. Don't rely solely on other people to kind of help you with that process. There are a lot of experts out there who all have you know, ideas and suggestions, um, but ultimately this is your idea, this is your design, this is your concept. So I encourage you to kind of get in there and manipulate it and play with it so that way you can learn, you can better communicate that and your findings to the experts in the field. I know when I started to you know, work on the, uh, what is now the Rockster, the booby ball at the time, and I was working with some rapid prototypes, even before I got to this stage, I was taking big blocks of modeling clay and I was forming it and shaping it. I probably bought two dozen of our competitive toys that are out there, sliced them open, cut them, packed them with you know, clay, put weight inside of it, threw it in a bathtub, you know, try to poke it with scissors, you name it. So during that process, I learned a lot uh, about the fundamentals of what it was I was trying to bring to market. So I would encourage you to really to do the same thing. Step four. Know what you know. Now, I'm the first to admit, I've got a very strong type A personality. Here at the Dublin Dog Company, I've got my hands in everything. I'm very opinionated when it comes to our graphics, when it comes to our marketing, when it comes to the product development. But you know what? There are cases and there are times when you have to kind of hold up your hands and say, you know what? I am not an expert when it comes to CAD design, nor am I an expert when it comes to the chemical makeup of polymers and elastomers. That is not my shtick. I don't know that stuff nor do I want to pretend to know that stuff. So once you become honest with what it is that you know and what you're comfortable with, what you don't know, pass the torch to those people who can help you. Put your guard down, let them in. By doing so, you're going to get a plethora of brand new ideas, new perspectives as well, um, that maybe you never even thought of before. I know for us, once I did that, we started getting really, really close to what I wanted the ultimate design to be. Once we got into the rapid prototype stage, things were really coming together. Now, I'm not going to kid you. You know, in the beginning, I probably went through four or five different designers, and I also probably went through at least a dozen, if not two dozen, different designs to kind of ultimately land on, you know, the, uh, the Rockster at this case. So, know what you know, be honest about it. When you don't, pass on to someone who does. Now, step five, you got to be tough, and you got to get tough. So when I talk about that, I mean that when you bring a product to market, it is a very emotional, high and low type scenario. You know, for me, you have to understand, when I had that aha moment about the Rockster, formerly the, the buoy ball, you know, when I was thinking about it, that started in August of 2008. Do you know when this toy came to market? January of 2011. That is a lot of blood, sweat, and tears. That's a lot of highs and that's a lot of lows. You know what happened the first time I showed this to somebody? I was so proud of it. It looked you know, phenomenal and had a great you know, glossy finish to it. it. Smelled wonderfully like vanilla. Handed it off and the guy looks like it and he's like, whoa, that looks like a sex toy. And I was like, what? What do you mean it looks like a sex toy? And you know what? It did kind of look like a sex toy, but hey, that's part of it. You know what? Everyone is gonna have an opinion. Everyone's gonna have a different vantage point than you do. So stay true to yourself, you know, have that thick skin. What you created hopefully is everything you wanted it to be. So don't get offended when someone doesn't see it exactly like you do. And you know what? There's always room for improvement. You know, to me, there's nothing more rewarding than working your tail off on a passion project and then have it come to life. You know, not every attempt that I made with the Rockstar, formerly the buoy ball, was a great home run. No, in fact, we had so many failures during that process that at some points I thought, you know what? This isn't gonna happen. But when I remained true to that passion and I listened to that inner voice, I was able to turn around all those failures and kind of use those as ideas for future products and future projects that I could kind of delve into when the time became appropriate. Keep in mind that the Rockster started back in August of 2008. It didn't launch until 2011. That's three years of flops and failures. But you know what? It was also three years of building up an arsenal of wonderful ideas that no, they didn't necessarily pertain to the Rockster, but they did pertain to other great ideas that we could use going forward. 
So now I've got at least you know a half a dozen toys that are fully vetted out, have been designed, I've got you know rapid prototypes on that we can bring to the marketplace, and I've probably got another two dozen that are at least you know sketched out and the ideas have gone from my brain onto a piece of paper so that when the time's appropriate, we can move forward with those. So, you know, remain true to yourself. Don't worry about failing. And should you ever have any ideas or suggestions or thoughts, by all means, feel free to write me. Again, it's Jason, J-A-S-O-N, at DublinDog.com. I am more than happy to listen to your comments and your feedback or your questions, and I'll help you out any way I can. Why? Because I love what I do. I'm passionate about building products, and I can understand that you probably are too. So, by all means, stay true to yourself. Don't get down. Keep the passion alive, and I wish you all the luck in the world. Thank you so much.